And now that you've had a chance to use the Sizing Waze Viewer, we're going to review what you've learned and to show you a few things that you might not have noticed when you were working with the tool. We'll be using the 2011 Tohoku earthquake, which was an earthquake in Japan. It was magnitude 9, so it was the, actually the fourth largest earthquake ever recorded. And it had a huge tsunami of nearly 40 meters high, and which damaged a, severely damaged a nuclear power plant and there were nearly 16,000 people who died in the earthquake or the tsunami. So let's get started though in looking at what the earthquake did as the waves traveled through the earth. So as you probably remember, the waves we're gonna look at, the P waves are, are shown with red lines, the S waves are shown with blue lines, the surface waves are shown with yellow lines, and our recording stations, our seismographs, are shown as, as red triangles. So let's go ahead and start things up looking at the surface. So there's our earthquake, and as soon as things are starting moving, we're seeing our P wave out here in front, followed by the S wave, and you'll see as the P wave gets further and further away from the earthquake, the distance between the P and the S wave, so that, which means the time between the P and the S wave, gets further and further apart as well. And then behind the S waves, you're seeing the surface waves. So now we're going further and further, we're seeing how far the P waves have gone, there's the S waves, there's our surface waves. Let's pause it for a minute. And let's look at our first station here, uh, GUMO. If we go over here, we'll see the P wave came in first, followed by the S wave, which is just arriving right now. If we want to go look at the first earth, the first station, we can go and look at the other side, the Earth. Let's look over here. And we'll say here that the station MAJO was very close to the earthquake. So really the P and the S waves were almost the same time. But now let's go back so we'll go back over to the side we're looking at. And so now let's keep watching a little further and see what happens. So now we'll spin a bit further here. So now we're seeing the P wave has gotten all the way to Hawaii. And you'll notice there's two red lines. You may have wondered why that was. The first red line is the first P wave arriving. The second one is also a P wave, but it's a P wave that it went down into the earth, bounced off the earth's surface, then went back down in the earth and then came up again. So it, it's traveling like a P wave and as fast as a P wave, but it had to go a little further. So it's, that's why you see it behind the first P wave. The same thing is true for the, for the two S waves. And then you see that these surface waves are slowly, are slowly falling behind. And if we go just a little further, we'll see that the surface waves are beginning to show up here at station GUMO. And as you learn in your exercise, the surface waves are the largest by far of, of the waves that we see on, this, on the Earth's surface as measured by, by seismographs. Now we look about what time it is so far. We're now, at this point, we're almost 15 minutes after the earthquake and the station out here at, uh, in the, out here in the, this, this side of the US, way out here, is, its P wave is just getting there. So it's taking 15 minutes to go around that far around the Earth and if we keep watching, let's start it up again. We'll see our S waves, we can speed it up a little bit. We'll see the, C the S waves are traveling further and further. Now you see these surface waves just about finishing at Guomo and now at Kip here, here in Hawaii. We're finally getting surface waves. So now we are at 25 minutes and the surface waves are just getting here. And you see how much further they still have to travel. So the, the waves are traveling around the earth for a long time after an earthquake. All right, so now let's go back and let's, let's look at the cross section. So we're going to look at now, we'll go this way, we'll restart ourselves and we'll pause it. Okay, let's pause. There we go. So now we're going to look at the cross section now. And so once again, we're seeing the earthquake was here, right near, pretty near the surface and the P wave is out in front, followed by the S wave. And what we're also do here for the first time is we're going to make it a little simpler. We're not gonna show all the waves. So we're gonna start again, and we're gonna show just, here's the P waves and the S waves. So watch what happens. The P wave has come down, it's hitting the outer core. And let's slow it down just a little bit so we can keep track of what's happening. And so now we'll watch what's happening. The P wave, if you notice, the P wave, it has 
bent a little bit here compared to the 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 circle we would have expected it to be more like a circle like a, the wave you see on a pond but it's slowed down and slowed down because the the outer core remember is liquid and so it, it's actually going more slowly through the outer core than it did through the mantle and now we and we see the s wave behind and let's keep watching and see what happens when the s wave hits the surface the, the surface of the outer core what we see is the S wave doesn't go through the outer core. And so as you would have been figuring, figured out when you did the exercise, that because the outer core is liquid, the S waves, the shear waves, couldn't go through this liquid. And so the, those waves only are traveling around sort of on the sides through the mantle, but the S waves don't get to go through the outer core or the inner core. Whereas you can see the P wave is still traveling right through, the P wave is still traveling on through and you see it's all already now down to the getting almost through to the other side of the core. And it would keep going. If we watch it, it's going to keep going. And that wave will come out of the outer core and into the mantle and come all the way to the edge. Okay, so now let's turn on all the waves that travel through the Earth. You've been looking at the major ones. Those are the ones that hit the outer core. But there are a lot more when you consider all the different combinations of waves traveling through the Earth and bouncing off of layers. So, what we're going to do here is we are going to go to turn on all the waves and we'll back it up and let's watch what happens. Let's slow it down a little bit. So, you saw this before where the P wave hit the outer core, but notice now we're including bounces. So, just like waves on the water can bounce into a rock and you can see waves bouncing back. When waves hit a boundary in the earth, they can also bounce back. So you're seeing waves bounce back and some waves go forward. And if we keep watching, now we'll keep watching and we'll see that, for example, we know when the S wave hit the earth's outer core, we said it was not going to get any, it wasn't going to go through. But if you look, you'll see here, once again, the S wave can bounce off and go back. And it's even, it's even, it can even turn into a P wave. So at a boundary, S waves can turn into P waves. And so it gets it can get really complicated with lots of extra layers and lots of extra waves. And also, if we look up near the surface, if you remember when we looked at the waves traveling around the surface, or we saw the, the, the P and S waves on the surface, we said there were some extra P and S waves. And those are some extra bounces. And again, those are some of the things we're seeing up here, some extra, extra bounces. So we keep watching. We'll see that there's just as as the waves hit more layers, there's more bounces, there's more waves going through layers, and so it just keeps getting more and more complicated. And if we keep watching, let's just watch a little further. <clears throat> we'll see when we find it when the waves get to the other side. We'll see now once you get over here. Now there's lots of different waves that have come taking different paths through the earth to get back up to the surface. So what that means is if you look at lots and lots of earthquakes and lots and lots of seismic stations from around the world, then you can figure out which waves took which, which waves took which paths through the earth and therefore what layers must exist inside the earth. So the recording of seismic waves has allowed seismologists to figure out the interior structure of the earth. It's just by, we can't go into the earth but by looking at the waves that we can record on the Earth's surface, we can figure out what paths those waves took through the Earth and what the structure of the Earth must be like such that the waves got to where they did at certain times. Thanks for listening.